channel my name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen video today is a very special video tonight on NBC a very special blossom I know that the fountain pen review I just did was very special in that it was the year of the rat special edition pen BBS 492 but this is also very special I've been waiting for quite a while to do this review I received this pen from my children for Christmas and it is a custom-made, the Just Right Calligraphy fountain pen set. So let's take a look at this pen right now. Okay, so I have here the Just Right Calligraphy fountain pen set. As I said earlier, this was a Christmas gift from my son James and my daughter Heather. So there won't be any unboxing here. But this is a really nice gift box that was inside the festive wrapping. We lift the top to see an amazing acrylic pen set that has three different stub nibs, each in their own section. I've never seen that before and it's a really cool feature. Before I go too much further, let me put some information up on this custom pen maker. My kids found this custom pen at the Spruce Meadows Christmas Fair or Bazaar. They have many different local artisans, services, and craftspersons along with the usual food, jewelry, cosmetics, and artist kiosks. This particular artisan is Ralph Sears. His website is www.justwriteinc.ca. From the back of his card, you can see his signature and the serial number of the pen. His website shows that he is predominantly a lathe metal turner, making a variety of cool products from shaving stands to golf ball mark repair tools. He does corporate gift items and custom branded gifts from ball points to roller balls and fountain pens. Some of his models are really interesting. As you can see from my pen, he uses some gorgeous materials. I've been using this pen every day since Christmas, and not because I know anything or have any skill in calligraphy, but because I journal every night. I like to write with a different pen every night and many times in different color inks. At the end of every journal entry, I will finish with a quotation, which I write using the 1.5 stub on the Just Right, which is filled with J. Urbain Emerald of Chauvore shimmering ink. I have until now not tried the 1.9 or the 2.5 stubs. My kids told me that Ralph threw in this terrific metal pen stand with the pen. I have this pen displayed proudly on my desk and it appears in most if not all of my videos. I've been getting a few comments about it from sharp-eyed viewers. Now I'm going to preface my comments and observations about this pen by saying that this pen will stay with me forever, regardless of any criticisms I might have of its parts, features, design, or performance. This pen is imbued with personal meaning, and I adore it. I really like what David Parker of Fig Boot on Pens has to say about pens that are special in his collection. They are the pens that have a personal story to them. When he uses them, they bring back those warm or fond memories. He mentioned this in a review of his Visconti Van Gogh irises and his personal experience of that painting by Van Gogh at the Getty Museum in Los Angeles. This is the same. This pen will always represent the love I have for my two kids, and they obviously have for me. I admonish them both severely for overextending their own resources to buy this extraordinary gift for their old man. I love you guys. Now for the pen itself. First, a beauty shot. The acrylic is just stunning. The chatoyance, the shimmer, and the variety of swirling colors in it is just remarkable. There's that deep purple and those almost amber as a cat kind of ambers 
along with those teal blues and black stripes. It goes into deep, deep colors, and there's shimmer, and it's just a joy to behold. As it is mostly a metal pen, it is pretty heavy, coming in at around 47 grams. Looking down from the top, it has a polished chrome finial that also incorporates or holds on the very serviceable clip. Seems to have a nice little hinge on it. Works very, very well. The cap tapers up and then down slightly to a double ring cap band of polished chrome. There's a small step down and then the barrel tapers up slightly and then down towards the polished chrome faux end cap, which has two turned rings in it and ends in a domed chrome end. The cap unscrews with less than one turn, which is really nice. And there is the polished chrome convex shaped tapered section and the screw threads for the cap. You don't feel those, but you do feel that rather abrupt, sharp edge on that step down to the section. And then we find a number five size, 1.5 stub in this case, and the other sections are packed in very tightly. There is the 1.9. So it pays to have guitar fingernails to get these out. There we go. And there is the 2.5. The um, nib and feed are part of a, an assembly which unscrews from the section very, very easily. Of course, it's attached right now to a converter. And it is a standard international converter. And the set came with four standard international cartridges with black ink as he tosses everything around. There is no branding on this anywhere. No branding on the pen anywhere. Uh, and it just has 1.5 and a little bit of scroll work. The cap does not post and it doesn't show any signs that any thought to posting was ever given this pen in the design or the execution. It was never even thought of. As I mentioned, I've been using the 1.5 stub for two months now. What surprised me about it the first moment I put the nib to paper was how incredibly smooth it was. And I want to show you why I think that is. Most stub nibs are steel that is just chopped off right at that point right there. Those edges end up being very sharp. And so writing with a stub, there we go, writing with a stub is just naturally a very sort of scratchy experience, from my experience anyway. But what I su was surprised about was I put this nib to paper and it is just the glassiest, smoothest nib experience I've ever had. And you can see when we get really close what I think Ralph has done here. I think he's taken uh, a generic stub nib. This might be a Bach, it might be a, a Yovo, I'm not sure. Uh, and then he has ground and polished that nib so that it is just silky smooth and you can see there's just a slight angle so when you put your paper your pen on the paper there's that slight angle there that just moves on the paper so beautifully and you'll see that in the writing sample now what i'd like to do is provide some measurements and size comparisons and then come back with a writing sample using all three nibs Please stay with me until after the writing sample where I'll talk about what I like and what I don't like about this pen.
Okay, we are back with the writing sample portion of the review. This is Claire Fontaine 90 GSM paper. So we will start with the 1.5 stub nib and move through to the wider nibs. For this test, what I'm going to do is I'm going to dip the pen in a relatively new ink for me. And this is the Ancient Copper from Diamine. This ink did extremely well when I tried it out in my most recent uh, acquisition, one of my most recent acquisitions, the uh, Fully Wen 2055 Ancient Civilizations. I was very impressed with how the ink did there. And so I've never used it with a stub nib. So we're going to find out right now. So this is the custom. Just right. Calligraphy set. This is the 1.5 millimeter stub. And of course the ink is diamine or diamine, whatever your flavor. Ancient copper. Let's check the wetness. Well, it's like a paintbrush, isn't it? And I would expect that too. Very, 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 very wet. So there will be no flex on this because these things are, are really stiff. But we will get line variation just from the angle of the pen. Gee, that's a lot of fun. Well, let's see if we can write with it. Extremely smooth. Just a hint of feedback. It's just amazing, that nib. And you saw from the close-up how polished it is. Now let's look at the 1.9. Now I've never written with this nib. So we'll have to see what we shall see. So this is... So this is the... Oh, This nib might need the uh, cartridge converter fill with, uh, with the ink to keep some ink flowing. Probably dipping it is not such a good idea. So let's try filling it. That's more like it. So, it stands to reason that the wider nib is going to need more ink, and dipping it just won't do it. So let's try this again. This is the Just Right Calligraphy Pen. And this is the 1.9 millimeter stub. Well, that's just as smooth as the other one was. Let's try 
the 2.5. I have never used anything larger than a 1.5 before, so this is going to be interesting. So this is the, uh, here we go. Just right. 2.5 millimeter stub. You have to write a lot wider, a lot larger, and Leon's getting wider. And Leon's getting larger. Let's try to write with it. Yeah, that's very interesting. Of course, I'm going to have to learn how to do that. It is an acquired skill. As you can see, the angle, the quickness with which you write make a difference as to how well it works. I really appreciate your sharing this experience with me. And there you have it. The Just Write Calligraphy Pen by Ralph Sears. So, what do I like about this pen? Well, the first most obvious thing about this pen is that it's just plain gorgeous. How do you put plain and gorgeous together? It's Deirdre. It's not plain at all. Even if it just sits uninked on my desk, it is stunning. The second thing is that those three buttery smooth nibs. I can't describe the feeling here. It's, it's just so smooth. It's easily the smoothest fountain pen I've ever experienced and it lays down a lot of ink and really shines with the shimmering sheening and shading inks. Say that four times fast. We have a symptom of Sadducee's strangler, Silas the Assyrian assassin, several seditious cries from Caesarea. Shimmering, shading, sheening. Careful. But there are some drawbacks to this pen. The cap does not post and seems like it wasn't even considered by the maker. This is a shame because even though I don't mind writing with pens unposted, and I mostly do write with my pens unposted, um, this pen is too short to write with. So as you can see, when I put my fingers all the way down here, I, my thumb is on that very sharp step and the pen is just very, very short. And if it posted, it would actually make it a, uh, a length that I could grapple with. Uh, but the other thing about it is that it makes me readjust my grip. Now, I've discovered ways in which I can write with this pen by holding it even further down, putting my fingers around the very slippery, that's the other thing about it, very slippery chrome section, just like that, and putting my th thumb up here right there, I can get a, a good grip on it and find I can make the swirls and so forth that needed for uh, this pen to work. That's not comfortable over a long period of time, however. And really what I use this pen for is those one sentence flourishes with a really cool ink for the quotations at the end of my journaling. So I wouldn't write with this for any length of time because of those drawbacks, but because of the other cool features about this pen, this pen will sit on my desk for a long, long time and I'll get a lot of joy out of it. All of these things lead me to suspect that Mr. Sears is a metal turning expert, but not a fountain pen user or aficionado. Uh, he's creating gorgeous pieces of art that have stunning nibs, but don't have those ergonomic touches that fountain pen enthusiasts really expect. Regardless, I love this pen and will continue to use it every day. As you can see from the writing samples, it has endless possibilities as a specialty writing instrument. So if you like this video, please like and subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell to be notified the moment a new video is posted. 
I would also enjoy and appreciate your participation through the comment section. Tell me what you think about calligraphy pens and or stub nibs. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote.